I was pastoring in Birmingham, Alabama, and uh, as a Methodist, the desegregation process was taking place in the church, and I had caught the train that morning to go to Nashville to be a part of a of a ceremony dissolving the Black Annual Conference, and it was merging with the White Conference. And so I was wasn't at home, and I came back on the pan that night on the train, and Evelyn was in the state. I saw her out the window, and I wondered what she was doing at the railroad station, waiting on me, because she wasn't scheduled to pick me up. And I saw a funny look on her face. And when I got off a train, she told me Martin had been killed. And of course, my heart sank within me. And uh, I went immediately to the radio stations to try to call for calm and so forth. Mm -hmm. But it was a sad, sad day, and, and uh, the surprising thing is there wasn't more violence uh, that I think black people did very well, considering the, the blow that Martin's death uh, inflicted on them. It was, it was a sad time, and we may never know who killed Martin, but we know what killed him. Hate, racism, violence, these are the instruments of death. And they killed Martin, and they will kill anybody because they are deadly forces. And we must cling to nonviolence and love because somebody's got to remain sane in a crazy world. And the children of God are called on to do that. And I think uh, it's good that God has called on us uh, in, a, in a special way. God has used us wonderfully. God has used black people. We ought to be, black folks ought to be the most religious folks in the world because right. God has used us so powerfully in this world to do so many things. Look, look at the change that's taken place in this country. Uh, in 1965, when we had the march from Selma to Montgomery, and we got the Montgomery Martin named me to chair the committee that would take the demands of the march to Governor Wallace. And uh, uh, when we got to the steps of the Capitol to take the petition, the troopers block, blocked our path after the, even though the General who was heading the National Guard had said we could get by, but he blocked the path. They all had on blue uniforms, and I called them the Blue Sea. Moses had the Red Sea. <laughs> Joseph had the Blue Sea, and <laughs> and we as I looked back at the general. I said, he said I could go up, and he yelled out some military commands and. The, National Guard, hip, 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 and they marched over and took their place in front of the troopers. And the Blue Sea parted <laughs> like the Red Sea did. And we walked through on dry land and carried the petition to the governor. But he, he wouldn't receive, he sent his secretary. And I, I wouldn't give it to the secretary because we had marched too far to give it to a secretary. So we didn't go, we, we decided we wouldn't go, so we didn't go. But a week or so later, he did meet with us. First he said he'd meet with a certain members of the committee. I wasn't one of them. <laughs> and the, and the, the committee decided we all would meet or none would meet. And we met and met with Wallace for about 90 minutes and, and carried the petition. And that was in 1965 and uh, the world became a, new place because of that Voting Rights Act. And here we were in 2009, just what, 40 some years later. And nobody, I don't remember anybody, I don't know whether CT remembered, but I don't remember anybody who said we thought there'd be a black president uh, in, 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 in 09, I didn't. Uh, somebody said, Bobby Kennedy said, he may have, I didn't hear him. 
but, but we thought that one day there would be a black president, but not in 19, 19, 2000, and not in 2009. But lo and behold, uh, I stood on the steep of the Capitol you sure did. in 2009, uh, just 40 some years after we had carried the petition of George Wallace in the inauguration. You, you see, oh, I, I couldn't see. They told me, so you, when you stand up there, you can see uh, the Washington Monument and, the, and the Lincoln <laughs> Memorial, but it was hazy. I couldn't see it. And my eyes were old anyway. I've been using them eight, eight years. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I didn't need to see. I heard. I heard a voice that day from the Lincoln Memorial from a 34-year-old preacher who was summoning the nation to come up out of the lowlands of race and color to the higher ground of content of character. And I heard that voice. It was cold. That was a cold day. <laughs> Look how God used us. God used us to make it possible to have a black president in 2009. And we owe it to the Lord to get up and work to, to keep the movement going and to raise the, 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 the righteous causes of, 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 of justice roll down like water. We, we owe God because He used us in a mighty fine way. <laughs>